is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Luke Richards back with me from Horizon Kinesis Club, formerly Luke Richards Wellness, when you talked to us last time, but lots of things have happened since we last talked. Yeah, so I've now uh, almost successfully uh, transitioned from being a solo provider to opening my own uh, clinic, health spa, whatever you want to call it, um, a spot for health and wellness in downtown Smith Falls. All right, let's 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 tell people where you are first. So I'm at 23 Beckwith Street North, Suite 201. Um, I'm in the uh, Rio Heartland Plaza there. Um, I'm now home to a, you know, 1200 square foot studio that has access to massage therapy, personal training, uh, eventually we're gonna get some K-taping stuff happening as well as percussive and compression therapy. Lots is happening. It's not quite there yet, but uh, uh, good things take time. So we're just slowly growing into our new spot. So do most people just come in off the street, Luke, and, and, and ask for your services or are you referred by doctors? How does that happen? Physiotherapists? A little bit of everything. So I have great referrals in town from chiropractors, other massage therapists, personal trainers, physiotherapy. Um, really, it's about finding the right fit for the client. So, you know, my style, I'm more of an athletic sports, deep tissue style treatment. That might be great for some people who are looking, you know, post-surgery or, you know, rehabbing an old injury. Um, if someone wants more of the relaxing, fluffy massage, I can do that too, but it's not my specialty. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, I'm looking to just, you know, light some candles and snooze, I'll say I can do that, but this person here is going to be a much better fit for you. So it's all about making sure the client gets what they need. I'm not trying to, you know, make a quick buck. I'm trying to make sure that the client is satisfied and has their needs met. So I have clients, you know, come in off the street for walk-ins. It's rare. Most often I get a text or a DM on Instagram or my cell phone to say, hey, Luke, I'm looking to book. I get them set up my online booking portal, and then we make sure it's a good fit, and we get them scheduled in for their treatment. Oh, and like you just mentioned too, you do a lot of post-surgery stuff, uh, stuff. But you, you and I talked last time, and sometimes people come to you and they don't need surgery. That can be the case. Yes, I find that you know, of course, if you're a surgeon, your your knowledge is surgery. If you're a chiropractor, your knowledge is chiropractic. So. What happens is a lot of people have a sore back and they just go directly to eMERGE. They say, oh yeah, I take a bunch of painkillers or we'll get you to a specialist for surgery. When in reality, they haven't looked at the whole system yet. And that's what I try to do is I try to look at every little piece like it's a puzzle and say, hey, sometimes yes, your rotator cuff is blown. They're gonna need to go and get that sorted out. Sometimes it can be preventative or you know, completely eliminate surgery altogether and say, hey, your muscles are weak here. There's an imbalance in your posture, your gait. Let's get you straightened up. Let's Here get you go, all yeah. sorted out. <laughs> and then, you know, as I straighten myself, I should practice what I preached. But uh, it's all about looking at the whole system. How are you sleeping? You know, sleep is huge. If you shouldn't be sleeping six to eight hours a night, you know, if you hold a squat for six to eight hours, your legs would be on fire. But people don't think of that when they sleep like this and wonder why their shoulders are sore. So it's about looking at lifestyle, occupation, the whole person and treating it very personally, you can get under the hood and find clues and say, you know what, you don't need to go get your low back fused. What you need to do is some core exercise and stop sleeping on your side. Yeah, and I mean, the last time you and I spoke too, because posture is important to me too. So as soon as you said that, you said, pretend there's a rope. Just holding you up, but yes, like, yes exactly. I, I, all day, people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm constantly just yep. straightening myself back so, up to, you know, eventually be in good posture. It's a, it's an impossible pursuit, but it is a pursuit. You got to keep trying at it. And I, again, I keep referring back to the last time we talked. We talked the last time and it was snowing out, snowstorms, people were shoveling and they were hurting themselves. Now, this time of year, I got a hold of you because now we're talking spring cleaning. We're going to be out cleaning the cars. We're going to be washing windows. We're going to be raking all sorts of different things, finding muscles we forgot we had, and we've all done it. The next day we think, oh my goodness, what have I done to myself? Absolutely. So it's a great time of year because spring means that everything's growing again. So like, uh, like flowers in your flower beds, we're growing too. We're using muscles that we've never used before. So the biggest thing, once again, is ergonomics. So raking with your legs, not just pulling, but using your whole body and letting your legs do the work. They're just, you know, two thirds of your body weight or your legs. So you got big muscles there, use them, not just, you know, your arms. If my arms are sore, it's like, well, you shouldn't even be using your arms. So a few things people can do is to, I would say, especially when it comes to gardening, raking and all that, invest in good quality tools. Um, try not to go cheap because they'll often break and you're going to often be using more of your own strength as opposed to the tool strength. Another thing I highly recommend for people who maybe have bad backs or have difficulty kneeling or getting down is raise garden beds. 
Um, gardening is for everybody, right? So, you know, I grew up with gardens and compost and I remember getting on my knees and hands and I'd be like, oh, this is fun. Then looking over at my mom and dad and they're, you know, like trying to stand back up at the end of the day, right? So having it raised where you can stand, still, you know, have a tomato garden or still get your veggies and produce or even some flowers. It's something that you can do. It's about thinking ergonomically and think, is this the right fit? Is this something that I can do long-term because gardening doesn't start just in the spring. It's a whole year pursuit. Cleaning off cars too, using the right equipment. Don't reach over the hood with the sponge. Get something to extend. And once again, use your legs and your core, not your arms. And you don't have to do it all in one day. That's what, that's the hard part. I know myself too. It's like, oh my goodness, you get up Saturday. I've got a day off. Let's do it all. Absolutely. So making a plan, you know, just like workout programs. If you're going to be working out in your yard, making a plan is huge. There's a good quote that says, um, failure to plan is planning to fail. So when it comes to anything you do, um, plan for it. How many hours am I going to be working? Am I going to be taking breaks? Am I going to be drinking water throughout the day? It's starting to get warmer, so water will increase. But, you know, making that plan and then, you know, make adjustments if you need to, but sticking to it. You know, putting 12 hours into, you know, topsoil is going to be no good for anybody. But getting adequate help, doing it ergonomically, thinking with your this and keeping your body in mind. And it can be enjoyable because you can do a bunch of gardening and a bunch of stuff in the air and then live to see another day, live and have the next morning like, hey, my back's good, I can do it all again. Excellent. Well, you know what, Luke, I, I find you very inspirational because I know the last time we spoke, I really took away from our talk, sitting up straight and the hydration. Oh my goodness, I have really, well, there you are, you're probably drinking water, that's not coffee, right? <laughs> It is, unfortunately. It is coffee. I, I, oh, we all have to have our it's coffee. It's far from perfect, but eventually we'll get to water. It's just to get me that juice to get going. That's right. That's right. It's an early morning for us today, too. I really <laughs> took to heart the last time we talked, though. I, I need to hydrate. And I'm really trying. I do have a bottle of water beside me. There's only a couple sips Excellent. out of it because you're my first guest today, but <laughs> I had to have all my in due time. It's still the day's still young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let, talk a little bit about how important hydration is because I know I've I've tried since the last time you and I talked was probably about six weeks ago. I feel better. I struggle with it. I, I'm not a good water drinker, but I really struggle with it, and I know I have to do it. It's so crucial, and that um, with my weight loss clients, when I do have the select openings for nutrition and weight loss coaching. Food is like the fifth step. Food is not even, it's important, of course, calories in, calories out, but you know, it's nowhere close to water and sleep for me. Making sure you're hydrated and making sure that your muscles are, you know, have that adequate hydration levels, it's going to make locomotion better. The best, it's a, it's a crude metaphor, but I find it helps to come across to some of my clients. I'm not sure if I said I'm the last interview or not, but um, looking at muscle, we're the same as animals, right? Look at a raw steak and look at a piece of beef jerky. The only difference is the water content. So a raw steak, you can beat it, tenderize it, pound it, throw it at the wall, but, I wouldn't recommend, but if you do what you want with it, it's going to keep its shape. It's going to stay bendy and pliable and move, right? Look at beef jerky. There's still there's powder in the bottom of the bag. You can crack it, crumble it. It's just water content in a muscle. So think about when you don't drink your water, I say, you're made of beef jerky today, I can tell, because people walk in, they're all, ah, I can hardly move, there's no fluid motion, right? Someone who's hydrated, they're not getting the cramps that they usually get. They're not, you know, having spasms or shooting pains. They're not slowly getting up out of their chair. They're liquid, they're moving, they're flexible. So having that high water content of course talking to your doctor if you have any kidney issues or filtration issues but a higher water content in your body is better than a lower one in most cases when do you think is the best time of day to to be drinking water i, I you know I, I again since last time I, we've talked i feel better and i've, I've read up mm. an awful lot about it because i struggle i just I'd, I'd rather have a cup of coffee or go for a diet pop so when is the best time to have a drink of water the best time is all the time. So if you're, what I usually do and I struggle, um, I have a nice big, you know, I think it's a 480 ounce jug of water. And I make little marks on it. 
um, with times saying, Hey, you got to drink this much by this much. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have it half done by 2 PM. Cause what happens are, the biggest complaint I get from people is when I say, Hey, drink water. They say, we're going to be in the bathroom all day. It's like, well, yeah, if you chug two liters first thing in the morning, you can't hold all that water. Right. So gradually throughout the day, it's like eating a meal. Do you eat all your calories at the beginning of the day? You're going to feel sick. Same with the water content too. Right. So start in the morning. The best thing I actually recommend, there has been studies that show that that drinking even warm water or lukewarm water first thing in the morning will actually help speed up your metabolism, kind of get you going. So I always say, if you can drink two, right when you wake up, go to the bathroom, fill your cup up two cups in the morning and then right before bed, two cups at night. And eventually you'll get out of, you know, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, but jump starting your day and end because when you sleep, you're not drinking water when you sleep. So you have to prehydrate to cover the course of that night. So you're not starting the next day in a deficit. Right? So, I always recommend drinking a little bit, like a, a good amount in the morning, right when you wake up, a good amount before bed, and then maintain a little bit throughout the day. And then tell if you're at 2 p.m. and that just still full, now you got to chug, unfortunately. So yeah. it's better to stay on top of it and maintain hydration. There you go. All the time. That's a, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Uh, Luke, I so appreciate it. It's hard. It. Yes, and it no is. No one's perfect, but you can uh, do your best. Yes, that's right. You just you, you do it for a little while, and you do. You feel better. You feel better. So it gets easier with time, for sure, for sure. Well, I appreciate Absolutely. your time, Luke. Uh, I, you're always an inspiration, and I always want to make myself better after I speak to you. So how do people get a hold of you? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll give it my phone number right now, 613-206-0521. That's my work cell phone. You can call or text me anytime to book an appointment. You can also catch me on Facebook and Instagram. My personal one is Luke Richards Wellness still, but eventually my team will be growing. So Horizon Kinesis Club, at Horizon Kinesis Club on Facebook and Instagram. Then, of course, they can book online if they don't even want to talk to me at uh, horizonkinesisclub.janeapp.com. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again, Luke. I will have this bottle of water finished by the end of the show today, I promise. <laughs> and I will promise I will skip the coffee and get some water as well. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure.